In 1997, Westwood Studios, the team behind the Command and Conquer series, released Blade Runner, a point-and-click adventure based on Ridley Scott's cult 1982 film. The developer won a bidding war for the rights to make the game, beating Activision and EA, and the result is a flawed but interesting movie spin-off that beautifully replicates the visuals and ambience of Scott's rain-soaked masterpiece. It might have aged technically, but Blade Runner is still worth playing today for its incredible atmosphere and its ability to transport you to one of cinema's most evocative worlds. While Harrison Ford's Rick Deckard was a washed-up veteran cop pulled out of retirement against his will, in the Blade Runner game, you're a fresh-faced rookie named Ray McCoy. He has the trench coat, the blaster, and the crummy apartment, but he's younger and less world-weary than the film's hero. His first case is an animal murder at an exotic pet store, a crime on par with homicide in this vision of the future, where most animals are extinct or critically endangered. Animals are one aspect of Do Android's Dream of Electric Sheep, the Philip K. Dick novel the film is based on, that the game actually explores more deeply. In the book, Deckard owns an electric sheep, but dreams of one day buying a real animal. McCoy has a dog, Maggie, who he says cost him a year's wages, but whether she's real or artificial is left ambiguous. There's also mention of a bone marrow test to determine if an animal is real or not, another reference to the novel. So whether you're a fan of Blade Runner the movie, or the book it's based on, you'll find connections to both here. Investigating this gruesome crime leads McCoy to a group of rogue replicants, Synthetic humans who are almost indistinguishable from real people, and whose presence on Earth has been deemed illegal. As a so-called Blade Runner with the Los Angeles PD's elite Rep Detect Squad, it's your job to hunt them down and kill them. This was not called execution, as Blade Runner's opening crawl so memorably put it. It was called retirement. Sound familiar? The biggest problem with the Blade Runner game is how closely it mirrors the film. Despite the immense size of this futuristic urban sprawl, McCoy's pursuit of the replicants takes him to many of the same locations as Deckard, from J.F. Sebastian's creepy toy-filled apartment in the Bradbury building, to the colossal pyramids of the Tyrell Corporation. As a fan of the movie, getting to visit these locations, especially when the developers have captured their look and feel so perfectly, it's undeniably a thrill, but it makes the game's plot feel a little too much like a retread. But honestly, the story is not the reason you should play Blade Runner. You should play it for the opportunity to exist in one of the most compelling and enduring settings in the history of film. Even with fuzzy 640x480 pre-rendered backgrounds and messy voxel-based character models, every screen is drenched in atmosphere roaming spotlights, blinking neon signs, and cluttered streets evoke the same downbeat, gloomy feel the film does. You feel a real sense of place as you explore locations like Animoid Row and Taffy Lewis's nightclub. In some respects, the game is a pretty standard point-and-click adventure, but really, it's a detective game. It's more about finding clues, questioning people, and following leads than combining items or solving puzzles. You also have a gun, but how you use it is up to you. If you identify and retire a replicant, you'll earn some extra cash. But if you let them live, it might impact the story in an interesting way. Relax, nobody's gonna get retired, okay? 
What do you want from Zubin? Just talk, that's all. When you start a new game, it randomly determines which of the principal cast are replicants. In one playthrough, a character could be human, while in another, they're artificial. There are even a few hints that McCoy himself might not be entirely human. Ow! Damn it! Oh! Oh no! I warned you, senor! You will surely die! But you are still standing. The poison, it acts very quickly. The choices you make, as well as timed events it's possible to miss, will result in one of 13 different endings. Some famous technology from the film is recreated as well, including the Esper machine. In the film, Deckard uses this to explore a photograph in three dimensions, and you can do the same in the game to uncover clues. Hello there, Lucy. Give me a hard copy of that. You also get a chance to use the famous Voight Kampf machine, a device that monitors a person's physical reactions as a Blade Runner asks emotionally stirring questions to determine whether they're a replicant or not. Positive result. Subject is human. Test terminated. Getting to interact with the film's retro futuristic tech and actually use it yourself in the field is another reason why Blade Runner is a must-play for fans of the movie. Some of the original cast from the film even reprise their roles for the game, including Sean Young as Rachel, Brian James as Leon. Who the hell are you? McCoy, LPD. LPD, huh? Maybe you guys can return something to me. James Hong as Chu. What you want? You were close to Eisendeller? Eisendeller? <laughs> no, no, no time for him. No go to lab. Eisendeller test off world gravity to work important organs. Visual center, you see. William Sanderson as J.F. Sebastian and Joe Turkle as Tyrell. He almost looks real. He's plenty real enough for me. And real good company, too. It's amazing that Westwood managed to reunite these actors 15 years after the film's release. Blade Runner is a game with big ideas, some of which fall flat, but it's still worth experiencing, even now. There are far better point-and-click adventures on PC, but few are this atmospheric. Sadly, all of the original game assets have been lost, like Tears and Rain, so an HD remaster seems unlikely. But at least now you can easily play the original game on a modern PC thanks to a long-awaited release on GOG.com.